Jesus revealed his plan to us in John 10 and 10. He said, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So that's the devil's purpose. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. If something is being stolen, killed, and destroyed out your life, it's not God, it's the devil. Mm -hmm. We also said that since, since, his, since he has a plan, we are looking at the tactics that he used to carry out this plan. And the first tactic that we talked about was the enemy takes away the seed of the word of God from those who do not understand. When you hear the word of God and you don't understand it, the enemy comes and snatches that seed out your heart. That's Matthew 13 and 19. The next tactic that we talked about was that the enemy uh, blinds us from the truth of God's word through unbelief. When you and I are in unbelief, the enemy can use that unbelief and blind us from the truth of God's word. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 3 and 4. We also said that unbelief is a choice. Mm -hmm. In Hebrews 3 and 12 in the Amplified Bible, it describes a wicked heart uh, or an unbelieving heart as a heart that refuses to believe. The word refuses expresses that it's a choice. So when you refuse something, you reject it. You deny, you, know, you, don't, you don't receive it. So that's a choice. So unbelief is a choice. You can choose to believe God or you can choose not to believe God. All right? Now, your choosing can be influenced. As a matter of fact, it is influenced either from the world or from the word. If you're influenced from the world, then you're going to operate in unbelief. If you're influenced from the word, you're going to operate in faith. If, if, you, if you understand that, say amen. amen. All right. The next, tact the next tactic that we talked about was Satan appears as an angel of light. He can, he can appear to be morally right. Him and his uh, servants can appear to be righteous. That's in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 13 through 15. We talked about that, how he can, how he de can deceive people by appearing to be the truth. All right, but... How how are we going gonna up, know the truth? Okay. What will what what reveals to us the truth? The word, right? Yeah. If the only way you're gonna know what's the truth is that you have to know the word of God. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. All right. The next tactic that we're gonna talk about tonight, I don't know if I'll finish it, but it is the enemy uses false signs and wonders to deceive people. Mm -hmm. The enemy uses false signs and wonders to deceive people. And I'm going to tell you the ones that's easily deceived with this are those that are following signs. Yeah. You got people that are looking for you. I need a sign, Lord. Show me something. Yeah. Shake the table. Move my hat. Show me <laughs> something. You know, people like that can be deceived. Uh -huh. The Bible says that signs and wonders are to follow us, right. not we follow them. But so many people, like Brother Chuck mentioned about the the, uh, the, the services that were going on in Lakeland, people was flocking to that because they were they had signs going on, so people was following mm -hmm. the signs. But the same results that they got there, they could have got from their church. That's right. Hallelujah. All right. The same results that you get from Benny Hinn, That's you right. can get from your church. That's right. Mm -hmm. Do you know those like people like Benny Hinn? Now he, I'm not talking that saying that he was false, but the one in Lakeland definitely right. was. But. Uh, Benny Hinn Ministries and stuff like that is really for the unbeliever. As believers, we shouldn't have to be going up there looking to, to, to receive healing because you already healed. All right. Only the unbelievers should be in those kind of lines, but they can't get in line because the believers blocking the way. That's right. That's right. Wow. Hallelujah. Praise, Praise, Praise Jesus. <laughs> the enemy uses false signs and wonders. Turn with me to uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Not yet, Flo. I don't want to let I ain't going to know what to do, do when it's time. <laughs> Bless your heart. I think you want to start now. How many people have Duke to make it? <laughs> well, Duke got your back back there. Raise right. the Lord. <laughs> Second Thessalonians chapter 2. When you get there, say amen. Amen. We're going to start at verse 9. We're going to read 9 and 10. 
It says, the coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders. Mm. And with all unrighteousness, deception among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. Mm -hmm. And that's talking about those that reject Jesus. See, you people are not going to hell because of their sins. They're going to hell because they're rejecting the one that delivered them from their sin. Right. They're rejecting Jesus, all right? Now, Paul said that the lawless one that he spoke of here is the Antichrist. Okay, that's what he's talking about. Now, I'm going to tell you something. The Antichrist cannot come in until the church is taken out. Once we're taken out, then the Antichrist come in. Now, some people teach that the Holy Spirit is going to be taken out, but I disagree with that because if people are going to be saved through the tribulation, then the Holy Spirit has to be Jesus, here. Right. Right. We have to be out of here. Yeah. And, uh, we are, and some people, even some everybody. Christians believe that they're going through the tribulation. God bless them. I'm out of here when Jesus comes. I'm, out of, I'm not going through no tribulation. <laughs> if you follow history, Jesus, God always took his people out before the trouble comes. Okay, so he ain't changed. Revelation 3 and 10 tells us that we're going to be out of here. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. Now, Paul revealed in these verses that the Antichrist would use counterfeit power and signs and miracles to deceive and draw a follower. However, Paul says that it is according to the working of Satan. See, the Antichrist and the false prophet get, get their power from Satan. Okay? And, and these signs and miracles that are done are false. They're not real. Hallelujah. <laughs> Flo, put the amplified by oh, the line. <laughs> Catch me. Hover over your ears. Now click the left one. Go up and click. Go up and click. There you go. There you go. Ooh, you did it. Too. Hey. <laughs> All right. I want, I want to read this from the amplified. It says, the coming of the lawless one, the Antichrist, is through the activity and working of Satan and will be attended by great power and with all sorts of, look at that, pretended yes. miracles and signs and delusive marvels, all of them lying wonders, hmm. and by unlimited seduction to evil. Now, that's scary. Yes. Unlimited, people are going to be unlimitedly seduced by evil. Wow. And with all wicked deception for those who are perishing, going to perdition, which is hell, because they did not welcome the truth but refused to love it that they might be saved. So here we see that Satan has the ability to produce false signs. Satan has the ability to produce false miracles. Are y'all understanding? Are y'all with me? Am I talking to the air? No. <laughs> the lawless one would do mighty acts pointing to himself as being supernaturally empowered. Let's look at another verse. Go to Revelation chapter 13. Oh, okay. No, you don't have to do it. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, <laughs> Revelation <laughs> chapter 13. <laughs> and we're going to look at verses... 11 through 14. Revelations 13 verses 11 through 14. When you get there, say amen. amen. Well, that was a sorry amen. I know it ain't, but a few of them are like, good gracious. Revelations chapter 13 verse 11. Praise the Lord. Amen. There we go, Bella. Shout amen. it out. Amen. Amen. Verse 11. <laughs> Still oh my. <laughs> Praise Jesus. All right, verse 11. If you ain't find it, you won't find it. Now. That's right. <laughs> verse 11 says, Then I saw another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon. And he exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence and causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast 
whose deadly wound was healed. Now, the first beast is the Antichrist. The second beast is the false prophet, which you can find that in the false prophet in uh, Revelation chapter 16, verse 13, and chapter 19, verse 20, I believe it is. All right? Verse 13 says, he performs great signs so that, even, so that he even makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Why? And he deceives those who dwell on the earth by those signs which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image of the beast who was wounded by the sword and live. Here, John was telling us that in, when, the, when, the, when the Antichrist comes, he's going to use signs and wonders to deceive people. And, and, and the only way that people will be deceived is because they're, they're, they're focused on seeing or experiencing some type of sign. People try to deal with God more in the natural than they do in the spiritual. And signs are in the natural. You know, people want to see natural signs. And, 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 and to a degree, signs are okay as long as you are not running after signs. But you and I, as believers, we should be ministering to the point that signs are following us. Uh -huh. Healing, people should be getting healed and delivered from our ministry, and, and signs should be following us. Yeah. But the enemy, he's so good, he can deceive you with, 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 with signs, wonderings, I mean, uh, lying wonders, and mm -hmm. even miracles. Now, I'm going to tell you something about miracles. Everybody know what a miracle is. A miracle is something that supernaturally happens, okay? Mm -hmm. The enemy, his miracle will lead you away from God. He can do healing through his miracle, mm -hmm. but the credit is not going to go to God. Right. He's going to set it up to where the credit either goes to a man or, or some type of facility or something like that. Okay, mm -hmm. But no healing takes place without God. That's right. That's right. But his, his, his way of pre presenting it would be, you know, giving this man credit, and I see that a lot. I see that now where people get healed and they say, man, this doctor did this. This doctor, did. thank God for doctors. I'm not coming against doctors, right. but the doctor didn't do it. Do you know medicine does not heal you? No. Do you know medicine sets your body up for your body to heal itself? Yes. Medicine doesn't heal you. It's, study has shown that medicine doesn't do it. You were created, you and I were created, our body was created to heal itself. That's why when you get a cut or something, it tries to heal itself. But we're in a sin-cursed earth, so, so it don't have the, 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 the original power that it had when Adam was in the garden. It, 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 it's losing that because our physical bodies are dying out. But your body was created to heal itself. However, now people are giving science the credit. They're giving doctors the credit. They're giving people the credit. And in a degree, we thank you for the, we thank, you know, we thank God for the doctors. We thank God for the science. But it's God that's doing the healing. The wisdom of science comes from God. The, but, but, but people take it away from God and give him the credit. And that's all because of the devil's influence. All right? Mm -hmm. Are y'all understanding what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, the enemy's false wonders is designed to destroy our faith in Christ and lead us toward himself and away from God. It is important that the enemy, in order to promote his lies and pass the Antichrist <coughs> off as God, use signs and wonders to deceive people. Jesus himself warned about false Christs and prophets rising up and performing great signs and wonders. You don't have to turn there. Matthew 24 and 24, Jesus said, for false Christs and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. Well, how are we, the elect, but that's talking about the Christian, how are we not going to be deceived? Because we don't know the word. You even have to, every sign, every miracle need to be judged from the word of God. Right. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm telling you, we're living in these last times and people are being fooled and they're being pulled away from God through the enemy's deception. 
Jesus is warning here about the false Christ and the false prophets still hold true today. Mm -hmm. Upon close examination, it becomes clear that many nice sounding messages don't agree with God's message or with the word of God. Therefore, we have to examine everything that we read or hear using the word of God as our guide because it's through knowledge of the word that we're not going to be deceived. Okay, you need to have that knowledge. Using the word of God, we have to examine thoroughly every book we read, every sermon we hear because only God's word can equip us to perceive errors and distortions in false teaching. We talked about that earlier in this message that you got some well eloquent speakers out there. Eloquent speakers. They speak, they 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 can they can make things, they can make the truth sound like a lie. They're good. But you and I shouldn't be deceived by that. Because we should have the truth, the real truth, which is the word of God, in our hearts. So when they start speaking and twisting the the, the lie and trying to make it look like a truth. We should be able to recognize it, yeah. all right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's sad that some of us don't. It's true. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Supernatural power performed by someone does not mean that it's of God. I'm going to say yeah. that again. Yeah. Supernatural power wow. performed by someone or an individual mm -hmm. does not mean that it's of God. Absolutely. Simon, the sorcerer. Mm -hmm. had people believing that his power was from God. Let's go to Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. Look at that. He had people thinking that his power was from God until Thank God you. showed Thank up. <laughs> Thank you. When God showed Another up, he window. wanted that power. He tried to even buy it. Amplified here in King James at 21. Acts King chapter James. 8, and we're going to start at verse 9 through 13. What was that? When you get there, I say amen. amen. All right, now, so that's what I'm talking about, Denise. Shout it out. So that first amen was really dragging, man. Chapter 8, beginning at verse 9. It says, but there was a certain man called Simon who previously practiced sorcery in the city and astonished the people of Samaria, claiming that he was someone great. All right? To whom they all gave heed, they paid attention to, from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is this this man is the great power of God. Now listen, now, now, now don't read over that verse. It's that verse says that they said this man is the is the great power of God. It didn't say he had great power from God. It says he is the great power of God. They was just about calling him the Messiah. Uh -huh. <laughs> because they was uh, they was fascinated with the with the sorcery and the and the, and the magic that he was doing. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Verse 11. It says, and they heeded him because he had astonished them with his sorceries for a long time. But but when they believed Philip, when the truth came, <laughs> as he preached the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus, both men and women were baptized. Then Simon himself also believed, and when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and was amazed seeing the miracles and signs which were done. See, when the truth comes on the scene, the lie has to leave. Uh -huh. the, the way you get rid of deception is through truth. See, his signs and wonders were false. Mm -hmm. The truth came, and they got rid of the false signs and wonders. Philip and the apostles started doing real signs and wonders. And it was so awesome that it turned him around, mm -hmm. uh -huh. the one that was producing the fake signs mm -hmm. and wonders. That's right. <laughs> Turn it around. That's right. <laughs> In the days of early church, sorcerers and magicians were numerous and influential. The reason why they were influential because people always followed signs. Mm -hmm. We're always looking for a sign. God, if this is really you, go give me here. a sign. What, the, his, what, left, what does so his word say? And, and see, I'm going to tell you something too. We yeah. need to have a relationship with God so, so developed that when, 
We hear from God. We know it's don't God. Click the action. Right. Close the People are asking for a sign because they don't have a relationship with God. Yeah. They don't know when God is talking to them. They, they can't distinguish God's voice from the enemy or from their own voice. Mm -hmm. And we need to be so, in re so, so much in relationship with God that we can recognize his voice. That's what Pastor Flo and Pastor Chuck been teaching on, knowing God. Mm -hmm. Knowing God is not having a head knowledge of God. Knowing God, the Greek word for that is, is intimacy. Mm -hmm. it, it means to have an intimate relationship with God. That's right. Uh, let, me, let, me, let me school you about prayer here right quick. The word prayer to find is communicate with God. Prayer is all day. You, you constantly communicate yeah. with God. But there should be a time of intimacy. Mm -hmm. There should be a, see, all through the day you may have people around you where you really can't talk to God like you want to. But there should be an intimate time with God. That, like, like Brother Chuck takes his intimate time early in the morning. We all should have an intimate time with God where we have shut everything out, everybody out, and we are tuned in to God. All That's right. how you develop your relationship with God. Amen. That's how you get to know God. Amen. You understand? Amen. That intimacy, that, that intimate time of spending with God. You need to spend time with God every day alone with God. You need to, and, and, and when you're alone with God, you need to listen to him. And that should be a time when you're not asking for nothing. That should be a time when you just want to hear God. I'm getting to where I go into prayer now. I'm asking God, what can I do for him? Who can I go out and minister to for him? Because we've been in a habit of saying, God, give me, give me, give me. My name is Jim, and I want you to give me. Okay? <laughs> but we need to get to a place where God can use us to spend that intimate time with And what I'm finding out, when you do it like that, God provides for that need sure. that you have. Because you are willing now to go out and meet somebody else's need. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> We're talking too much in prayer. We need to be listening. Mm -hmm. You need to distinguish his voice. Amen. All right? In, uh, the, uh, the magicians and the sorcerers work wonders. They perform healings and exorcisms. And they practice astrology. That's with the stars and all that stuff. Okay? Mm -hmm. And that is definitely devil. Don't read your horoscope. Okay? Right. Listen at what it says. Horror. Horoscope. <laughs> it's, it's designed to produce fear in your life. People come to me, they say, uh, my sign is a Gemini. What's yours? I say Christian. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I used to say uh, Scorpio because I was in November. But now, Christian. You understand? I don't even, get, I don't even go off into that. You know, don't open the door for that kind of stuff. All right? That's demonic. People, I got to read. One lady, I remember her from college. I got to get up every morning and read my horoscope. And she wondered why she walked around in fear all the time. <laughs> just, just think, folks. Their wonders may simply have been, you know, their, their signs. <laughs> I see. Their signs. <laughs> bless her heart, Lord. Do show her how to do it. She's sitting there doing all like this. Five. Oh, boy. <laughs> just, put five, just put five minutes up there. All this here ain't necessary. <laughs> like you tried to hypnotize me or something. <laughs> bless her heart. <laughs> all right, so. The wonders that they was doing, it could have just simply been magic. But personally, I believe that it was most likely that they power that they were empowered through Satan. Now Satan have people out there working false signs and wonders to draw a following. You got people that actually uh, worship Satan. Okay? And these people he'll use to draw people in with signs and wonders. Satan has a Bible. He has a Bible out there. I've never read it. I don't even think I want to read it. I know, you know I know. Mean? But those people that are that are worshipers of Satan, he, he empowers them to do false wonders. He may uh, present you with a healing. But I'm going to tell you something about the healing. It won't last. Right. Because it's not real. It's oh. a deception. Yeah. He can't heal. Right. God is already healed. Yeah. Right. You understand what I'm right. saying? But but he can deceive you. He right. can get you and then and then you find yourself following 
him because you after signs and wonders. Right. Stop following signs. Let signs right. follow you. Right. Okay? That's what happened. Can I call his name? Will I be out of the line? I want to call his name so bad. <laughs> That's what happened with the guy in Lakeland. They was following the sign. And it was some good things happening there, not because of him, but because of the people that was there believing. They believed. Because he was way off base. Like Brother Chuck said, his, his, his spiritual high came from a natural high. He was drinking. And he was cheating on his wife. Yeah. And he left his wife. Now, why he ministered? He left his wife for that. He left his wife. You can put it down. <laughs> <laughs> he left his wife for the one that he was cheating with. <laughs> you have to edit this card. We, we, we need to get us some flashcards. <laughs> we need to get all. Oh, no. Nah. <laughs> Bless her, <huh>? <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Simon had done so many wonders or so many miracles that some even thought that he was the Messiah. I'm looking at this verse here, and verse 10 again says, to whom, talking about Simon, they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, this man is the great power of God. So they was, they was naming him almost like he was the Messiah. They, they didn't say he had great power from God. They said he was the great power. And, and, that's, and people are deceived today like that. Amen. Amen. All signs and wonders should be examined using the word of God as the standard to determine whether or not they are of God. Mm -hmm. Simon's power was not from God. If you read the verse out, if you read it on out to about the 21st verse, 24th verse, you, it'll reveal to you that his power wasn't from God. If anyone draws attention to themselves and not to Christ, their work is not from God. That's why I listen to people that, that are doing great work. A lot of times they can get caught up into themselves. And when, when a person comes up and starts bragging on them and not bragging on God, you have to watch that person. Yeah. Okay? See, a cult, more people don't know, a cult is man-ran. Anytime a cult is about, it's, it's, it's focused on a man. See, Christianity is focused on Jesus. It's about God. It's not about man. And when man starts pointing to himself, the antennas go up. Okay? Hallelujah. Now, contrary to what the enemy's plan is, Jesus' plan is to give life. Let's go back to John 10 and 10. And we'll close with this verse. John 10 and 10. We're going to close with this. We've been talking about the enemy's plan and his deception, but Jesus' plan, and, and, I, and I put this in here to remind us that it's not God that's doing the bad stuff. Mm -hmm. right. It's the devil. That's right. And, and it's sad that we'll get people in church and they say, oh, I agree with you, Pastor. You're right. It's, it's, it's the devil. Excuse me. But as soon as something happens, well, you know, God, God, God did it. He did it to get my attention. You know, and when somebody died, well, God must have wanted that flower in heaven. No. He got plenty of flowers up there. He don't have to pick one here. Okay. And then you hear people talking about, yeah, God wanted them up there as an angel. Listen, folks, when we go to heaven, you are not going to be an angel. Okay, we are above angels. We don't judge angels. Right. Okay, so we, so so we, you don't be an angel because I hear people saying somebody a loved one died, and they'll say, well, she's an angel now watching over me. He ain't no angel. <laughs> <laughs> Good Lord. Read your Bible, people. All right, John 10 and 10. It says, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. Jesus said, I have come that they may have life. Who is the day that they're talking about? Us, right? He's talking about. He said, I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. The life that he's talking about here, the Greek word is zoe. Z-O-E with a hyphen on the E. Yeah. And it's talking about the God kind of life. Now, the God kind of life that he's talking about is the life that goes on in heaven. Yeah. The life that goes on in heaven, there's no sickness, there's no disease, there's no death, there's no killing. 
So if Jesus came to bring us that kind of life, when death and, and tragedy strike, we know it's not from Jesus. Because he said, I come to give you the God kind of life, not take your life that's from you. Right, that's right. But we, but we, but we don't, you know, we get into the cliches and, and we get into the tradition of hearing certain things and, and we find ourselves blaming God. But Jesus said, I came that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Uh, the Amplified Bible says that you may have it to the overflow. I like that, to the overflow. So he came to give us life. The enemy came to take life. Now, next week, we're going to start talking about principles or requirements on how to resist the enemy. I'm going to show you from the word of God how to resist the enemy. And when we talk about resisting the enemy, we're talking about standing against him. Like Beverly got that song, Stand. Mm -hmm. That's what you have to do. You have to stand. Stand and when, when, when she sang that song about standing, it's talking about trusting God. Uh -huh. Standing in faith, not being moved by the circumstances, not being moved by the devil whispering in your ear. Just standing in faith, believing that God has already provided. Amen. Amen. Father, we give you praise and honor. We thank you, Lord. Thank you for revealing to us the strategies of the enemy. We thank you that none of his plans will ever prevail against us. But we understand and recognize all of his plans. And we thank you that you've given us authority over him and power over all his power. And we exercise that authority each and every day. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. And everyone in agreement say, amen. amen. Okay.